praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Good to see you out there this morning. I want to welcome each and every one of you to this blessed celebration. Hallelujah. Can Pastor Andrea's EPUBC family, those who are able, take a moment, hallelujah, to thank God for Pastor Andrea. Can we give it up? Come on, because one year ago, she answered the call to become our pastor. And in such a short time, she has served hard, she has worked hard, she has prayed hard, and she had led us well, hallelujah. And what a year, what a full year. If there are any family members, I see Brother Eugene here, that you could stand or wave to be acknowledged. Praise the Lord. Any of her church family from EPC. Welcome, welcome, welcome. And if you're visiting here for the first time and wondering what we're doing, hallelujah. We're praising God for his goodness. We're praising God for his goodness. For the call to worship, for those that are able to stand, could you stand? It's taken from Psalms 96. And I'm reading from the Message Bible. It says, sing God a brand new song. Earth and everyone in it, sing. Sing to God, worship God. Shout the news of his victory from sea to sea. Take the news of his glory to the lost. News of his wonders to one and all. For God is great and worth a thousand hallelujahs. His furious beauty puts other gods to shame. Pagan gods are mere tatters and rags. God made the heavens. Royal splendor radiates from him. A powerful beauty sets him apart. Bravo, God. Bravo. Everyone join in the great shout. Hallelujah. In awe before the beauty. In awe before the might. Bring gifts to celebrate. Bow before the beauty of God. Then to your knees, everyone, worship, hallelujah, hallelujah. Let us bow for prayer. Hallelujah, Father God. Thank you for your holy presence, the Holy Spirit. You are welcome in this place as we praise and glorify you, God, for your love and faithfulness shown towards us. Not only in our personal lives, we've been through some things this week, but in the life of your church. We praise and thank you, God, for sending a sheep shepherd to EPUBC, Pastor Andrea Anderson, one year ago. We celebrate and say hallelujah, hallelujah, which is the highest praise. Almighty and great God, you are welcome to move among us and manifest yourself in the hearts and minds of us, your people. Be with the preacher, Reverend Dr. Britton, as she delivers a powerful message from your rich and piercing word. We evoke your holy presence, God, in spirit this day. We will worship you in spirit and in truth. In Jesus' name we pray and say together, amen, amen, church. Hallelujah. Amen. Go choir.
the power. Hallelujah. So on the count of three, we're going to say, God's got the power. Say, yeah, she's got the power. Right? One, two, one, two. Congregation sing, say. Oh, y'all sound so good. Keep singing. of the month, the time of the day, the time of the week. It is your time, your moment right now. It is offering time. It is the best time. We are here to come forth and give God our, our offerings, our heart, our undivided attention, and that's what we're going to do here today. So if I can ask the ushers to come forth. If you have not um, put your envelope in the bucket, just raise your hand and we'll collect them on the way. And if you need an envelope, the ushers will assist you. Okay, and as they come, I'm just going to remind you that there is three ways to give here today. By mail, by e-transfer to giving underscore at ebc, e-p-u-b-c dot C-I. I had a Pastor Andrea moment there. <laughs> and in person on Sunday. So today, right now, we're going to give God our offerings.
greetings. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the abundant, your abundant generosity. As we give today, open our hearts to be more generous, reflecting your love. Bless these offerings to further your kingdom and bless us as cheerful givers. Bless you, O oh Lord, of all creation. Through your goodness, we have the money to offer, the fruits of our labor, the skills that you have given us. Take these and our possessions to do your work in the world, in our city, in our community, and effectively in our lives. As we make this offering, we ask that your spirit fill us, your people. We ask, Father God, that you continue to reveal yourself to us and lead us as how we want to use these gifts. Father, we abide in you. We thank you for your love, for all that you do. You're faithful. You're a good father, and you withhold nothing back from us. So, Father, just as it was offered up in worship, the gold, the frankincense, and the myrrh before your son, Jesus, in whose name we pray, we thank you for all things today. Amen. So I have one more task before you, and that's the announcements for this week. Today we celebrate the first anniversary of our senior pastor. God bless her heart. <laughs> pastor Reverend Anderson, and Andrea Anderson. Um, so we, there will be cake to serve and goodies and refreshments, and you can give all your hugs and therefore after. <laughs> Our graduation our recognition event, a truly momentous occasion. It is set to take place on June 30th at three o'clock here. We're eagerly anticipating the opportunity to celebrate remarkable achievements of our junior high, senior high, and post-secondary graduates. I think that's Medora's applause, right? We are counting on your active, active participation to ensure that this event truly is special. Please submit your graduates' details and photos to Tanya Clayton. Tanya, are in the building today? Okay. Whose contact and information is in your bulletin. The keynote speaker is Ashley Hill, founder and executive director of Prep Academy. Guest uh, preacher will be Pastor Matthew Thomas, and the Honorable Twyla Gross, MLA for Preston, will present the certificates to the graduates and share some inspiring remarks Let's join hands to make sure that this is a rememberable moment for them all. Young adults, this year annual Provincial Baptist Youth Fellowship Conference, July 5th to the 7th, 2024, will be held at the Windsor Plains United Baptist Church. We extend a warm welcome to our youth and young adults, groups of the AUBA churches and youth from across the province to an annual conference and gathering that fosters unity and spiritual growth. Registration package is also in your bulletin, so please make sure that you refer to them, both online and your printed handouts. And then the other thing that I'm going to also share is the AUBA annual sessions, August 16th to the 18th, 2024, hosted by New Horizons Baptist Church in Halifax. <laughs> and it's called Rebuild. What a title. So I'm not going to spoil anything because I don't know nothing. So you all want to know, you have to be in those seats. And just to give a little teaser, we're just going to also just mention some of the keynote speakers. Uh, Reverend Dr. Leonard Anderson, speaker on Saturday evening. Dr. Reverend Britton, speaker Sunday morning. And our very own Reverend Anderson, Andrea Anderson, speaking Sunday afternoon. And also Sister Lenore Simmons, who will be the soloist that day. So you will be in for a treat. So those are your announcements for today. Please enjoy the rest of the service. Here it is. There we go. Hello. Greetings and good afternoon, people of God. What a blessing it is to have this occasion today. Awesome, awesome blessings. And I want to bring you greetings from your association executive who are just as excited as the excitement in the house on this important first anniversary. Do I see any executive members in the house? I think I see some. One, two, three, four, five, 
six, oh, okay, they're all over. And so that's important that we continue to grow together as church and association. We celebrate the saints of hope and revival that you are experiencing. A revival and hope that we working hard to ensure we can see also in our association. And I can tell you what a privilege it is to work with Madam Vice Moderator, your pastor here, because I could go away for six weeks and the association wheels kept running so well that, yes, that's right, that's worth a hand, that's worth a hand applause. Because she was on top of things and I want to say thank you for that. Contrary to what we sometimes hear about our association, it is a good time for the association. Let me give you a few examples. We got new office space right here on Coal Harbor Road, which, yes, which is going to give us adequate space. Listening to us are in progress. There were two yesterday, one for District 1, the other one for District 2. And I've read through most of those notes, so thank you very much. Great, great vision. It's a long time since we started off with our strategic vision and the listening to us will provide the underpinning for the next vision of our great association. And there are still many more blessings, including the upcoming association that you just heard about. I need you to register. If you register, I promise to feed you free. Ah... If you register, you have three wonderful free meals for, during association weekend. So don't forget to register. But I see you don't want to eat and that's okay. <laughs> so God is doing a new thing. And I want you to be part of the solution, not part of the problem. I came to the AUBA almost 30 years ago and people were complaining then. Some of them are still complaining now. Be part of the solution, not part of the problem. Reverend Andrea, I'm ecstatic for you and your church to arrive at this point. And I rejoice in your journey and will continue to journey with you. When the time for your internship came, I got a call from the other Reverend Anderson. I think he's seated right here. And you know Leonard calls everyone about everything. Right, Leonard? And he says... I am wondering what we're going to do for Andrea's internship. Do you have any ideas? I said, for sure, Dr. Frank Winter. And I think you had a fabulous time with Dr. Frank Winter. And so we celebrate the kingdom partnership that spreads even beyond our association. As I leave you with God's word, it's coming from Romans 14:17. So that all of the excitement that we are experiencing today and in the past one year and in the ones to come, I pray that we continue to build a kingdom of God that looks like Romans 14, 17. Listen to this definition of the kingdom of God. It says, the kingdom of God is not a matter of what we eat or drink. I'm not saying start starving. No, I didn't say that. But of living a life of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Did we get that? The kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. That's the promise of the ministry that God has put together. We give thanks to God and pray many joys and blessings, more than even just getting back into the building next month. But we celebrate that. What a sign of God's strength and anointing upon you. To God be the glory. Great things he has done. Amen. Good afternoon, church. Good afternoon. First Thessalonians. 518 says in all things give thanks and it truly is my honor and pleasure today as an independent senator for Nova Scotia to present this certificate to Pastor Anderson so I would ask you to come forward Pastor Anderson 
I don't know if she told you, but she, she went away for a few days so that she could get some rest, rest up for today. <laughs> and I ran into her in the airport. <laughs> and you know, in an early Monday morning, this pastor was glorifying God as she was making her way through the airport. I heard this person saying, Senator, Senator. And I looked, there's Pastor Ann. So I want to offer you this certificate of congratulations on behalf of the Senate of Canada. And I want to say thank you for your dedicated and inspiring service. You know, the past year has been a challenging one for East Preston United Baptist Church. But you have led the people through the storm. Amen. And the excitement here today, I think, is an indication of how pleased people are with your ministry. So on behalf of the Senate, I want to say thank you. So good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our pastoral first anniversary. Pastor Andrew, can we have you take the stage, please? So on behalf of the, uh, your ministerial team here at East Preston United Baptist, your finance team, and your entire church family who love you dearly, we want to thank you for all that you've done through God's direction and through his grace and through his mercy because I know without him you couldn't do all of it but I thank you for your diligence your work and I just thank you we thank you for answering the call eh church we thank you for answering the call to come to East Preston United Baptist Church because I'm telling you now amen 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 it's only been a year but honestly I feel like Pastor Andrea has been here for a decade but we want to say thank you today, Pastor. We want to let you know that we truly love and appreciate you. And God continue to bless you from your head to your feet in everything that you um, possess to do. We thank you for all that you've done for us. We thank you for loving us as your family. And we love you right back. And you as well, Eugene. You're, you're part of our family as well. So we hope that you really enjoy your day. We just want to show you some love and appreciation today. May you enjoy your day however you want to. God bless you. Turn off your phone. Don't answer no calls. She said, you can say something. It's your day. I just want to say thank you for uh, journeying with me over this last year. Truly, you know, we had our highs and our lows, but we will continue to trust in the Lord God Almighty to where he is taking us. I told you before, I don't know, I don't no matter what comes our way, we are in it together and God will see us through. We're going to come out on the other end better. I'll tell you right now, we just getting started. So excited about being able to get back into our building, uh, hopefully July the 14th. And we're praying that'll be a time of celebration. And having said that, we wouldn't be able to do it without Brother Derek Williams. You all know that. This brother, come on, give him a round of applause. Yeah. Truly, his labor of love. I've, I thank God for the partnership with this man who has a heart for this community, a heart for this, this family of God. I'm just, we're just so blessed. He is going to take a vacation, y'all. He's going to the Calgary Stampede. I didn't even know the brother liked that kind of stuff. But he does, so we're, we're going to release him to go to that. But today, thank you so much for just journeying together as a family of God. And I'm excited for what he has in store. God bless you.
tu vas me dire cinq. My task today is not just to usher, but to introduce our guest speaker for this afternoon, Dr. and Pastor Rhonda Britton. <laughs> Dr. Rhonda Britton is the senior pastor of New Horizons Baptist Church in Halifax, Nova Scotia. Hmm. And she's the first female pastor of the Mother Church of the AUBA. Oh. She was born and raised in Jacksonville, Florida. Dr. Britton has earned several degrees, including a Master of Divinity degree from Princeton Theological Seminary, Princeton, New Jersey, and a Doctor of Ministry degree from Acadia University, Wolfram, Nova Scotia. She is one adult son, Joseph, living in Florida. Since answering the call to New York to New Horizons, Dr. Britton has continued the church's long history of work in the community. Her efforts include building interfaith relationships, organizing community rallies, and anti-violence community walks, engaging mu municipal and provincial government in community sustainability efforts working to eradicate anti-black racism in all sectors and providing practical help such as community meals, clothing drives, and various outreach initiatives. Pastor Rhonda practices a living faith. She is a former president of the CBAC and a former moderator of the AUBA. She serves as chair of the Richard Preston Center for Excellence Corrections Canada Interfaith Committee on Chaplaincy and anti-violence initiatives in the Halifax municipality. Pastor Rhonda stresses education encourages youth to make positive life choices and works to eliminate street violence. Pastor Rhonda believes in God-directed life. Her ministry focuses on encouraging members of the body of Christ to draw on the power of the Holy Spirit and their own spiritual gifts to promote liberation and transformation in the lives of all people. She firmly believes in Philippians chapter 4, verse 13, which paraphrased, declares, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. God bless you all. Have a great day. Enjoy the rest of the service. Victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to Jesus. 
Yes, I find my victory. You're forever victorious. Forever. Yes, I find my victory. Say the victory belongs. Say the victory belongs. Oh, yes, the victory. So victory belongs, victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs. Yes, victory belongs. Victory belongs. Oh yes, and victory belongs. Victory belongs. Yeah, yeah. Victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs. You know the victory belongs. Victory belongs. To say the victory belongs. so nice to to see our young people as they grow. I remember this young man. He's just growing into a fine young man. <laughs> Hallelujah. Bless God for that. I was telling um, Reverend Andrea that we just had such a rich service today. We celebrated our grads today and to see the young people and the achievements, the excellence it's just wonderful. You know, I reminded the church family, we've always been a people of excellence. And if you just keep your hand with God, hallelujah, he'll bring you all the way. So I bless God. I bless God for all of you. Thank you for having me here today. Thank you, choir, for blessing us. Thank you, Josh, for blessing us. And thank you, East Preston United Baptist Church for blessing your pastor. Amen. I appreciate the invitation to be here because, you know, that's my girl. <laughs> and I can't say no. And she doesn't say no to me. So we, we kind of got it like that. So I bless God for you, Rev. I thank God for that. God has landed you in this place, and you are doing the work of the Lord. It's been a long day for those who had a morning service, so I'm going to try to not hold you too long, but I've been given permission to do whatever, so <laughs> I might have to take it. 
I want to acknowledge my brother in the house, Reverend Dr. Anderson, Leonard Anderson. We always have to distinguish now <laughs> between the Andersons. And of course, uh, Dr. Elias Mutali, who is our AUBA moderator. And I know he acknowledged the other executive minister, uh, members in the house. And so God bless you as well. And all of the officers uh, and members of East Preston United Baptist Church. The scripture lesson for this afternoon comes from Exodus chapter 17. And I want to thank you for this music that has been along the theme of the message today. Exodus chapter 17. I'll be reading from the New International Version, verses 8 to 13. We stand to give honor to the word of God as we are able. You're not obligated. Hallelujah. There's freedom in Christ. Amen. The Amalekites came and attacked the Israelites at Rephidim. Moses said to Joshua, choose some of our men and go out to fight the Amalekites. Tomorrow I will stand on top of the hill with the staff of God in my hands. So Joshua fought the Amalekites as Moses had ordered. And Moses, Aaron, and Hur went to the top of the hill. As long as Moses held up his hands, the Israelites were winning. But whenever he lowered his hands, the Amalekites were winning. But whenever, oh, when Moses' hands grew tired, they took a stone and put it under him and he sat on it. Aaron and Hur held up his hands or held his hands up. One on one side and one on the other, so that his hands remained steady till sunset. So Joshua overcame the Amalekite army with the sword. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Consider this pericope and meditate with me for just a few moments on the thought. Don't stop now. Don't stop now. Let us pray. Lord God, now in this the moment of proclamation, we invite you, God, to open up this word to our understanding and our hearts are ever grateful that you care enough to send us a word. It always amazes us, Lord, that you take the time to speak to us through your word that you continue to toil over us, to shape us and make us and mold us into the people that you would have us to be. I pray that our ears are opened, Lord, and our hearts are open so that we would hear it, receive it, believe it, and then, God, we pray that you give us the strength to live it. Let me decrease now so that you would increase and the word come forth as you would have it. We declare that we are here waiting on you. In the name of Christ Jesus, amen. Well, again, let me say congratulations to my sister and to the church family at East Preston United Baptist Church. One year, kind of. Because it seems longer in my mind because you were there as the interim, right? And so I'm like, one year? <laughs> but it is one year as the, the official angel of the house at East Preston United Baptist Church. So God bless you all. The first year of a pastor, and even sometimes the first two, two, two years, is usually a mixed bag, uh, you have the excitement of a new assignment, getting to know new people, a word to bring every week, coming alongside people in all kinds of situations, and encouraging faith and growth. On the other hand, it can also be a challenge of a new assignment, <laughs> getting to know people. <laughs> A word, Lord, to bring every week, coming alongside people, dealing with folks in all kinds of situations, and encouraging, come on, 
Come on. Encouraging faith and growth. Answering the call to a church is no easy, flippant decision. This is serious business. And church, I know that she laughs and jokes around, but do not let that fool you into thinking that is the measure of this woman. Pastor Andrea is a praying woman who does not play with the things of God. Do you know how much prayer went into her even accepting the interim position, much less the call to be the pastor, the senior pastor? Do you know how much prayer for you and for her has gone up to the throne of God to bring you to this place today? When I thought about your call here, Pastor, I thought about our hero today, Moses. Call to leave the backside of a mountain and report front and center in a saga of deliverance. Call to leave the comfortableness of a family in which he had found love and acceptance to go to a people he did not know. Assume a position of leadership among them and attempt to move them to a place God would have them go. Called to proclaim the name of the I am and persuade the people that the God who created them has a plan and a future mapped out for them. Called to bear the load of leadership, the cacophony of complaints, the resistance of rebels, the defiance of doubters, the faked friendliness, the sneakiness of sabotage, the noise of negativity, and the pure pettiness of people. I said Moses was called to bear all that. I know that doesn't happen at East Preston United Baptist Church. God knew what God was doing when God sent Moses to lead the Israelites out of bondage. And God knew what God was doing when God sent you, Reverend Andrea Anderson. And church, I need you to hear and understand what I'm about to tell you. If you're listening, say amen. amen. God set Reverend Andrea in your house. She is the set woman of God. She is the one the Lord has sent to you for this time. God can do whatever God wants to do, and God can anoint and appoint whomever God chooses. Pastor Andrea is God's choice in God's sovereignty. She is the angel anointed and appointed to East Preston United Baptist Church, and sometimes as this pericope reminds us, there is a battle to fight where your help is needed. In our story today, the Israelites are attacked by the Amalekites. Our hero Moses instructs Joshua to lead an army out to fight the Amalekites. And while the army is on the battlefield, Moses goes to a high place. He goes up on a hill. He has already seen what his staff, endowed by the power of God, could do. When the Israelites were caught between the Red Sea and Pharaoh's army, Moses cried out to God, and God said, what you crying out to me for? Use what's in your hand. So Moses took his staff and held it out over the sea, and the word of God says the sea parted. His people crossed over on dry land while Pharaoh's army, in hot pursuit, were caught in the middle of the ocean bed when the waters came together again. They were not far on their journey. God had done this miraculous thing. But they didn't get very far on their journey through the wilderness before the people began to complain about not having water. And Moses took that same staff and following God's instructions, stood before a boulder at Meribah and struck the rock. And water began rushing out for a thirsty people in a dry land. Now Moses takes that same staff, climbs up on a hillside, and raises his arms over the battlefield. 
As long as his arms are up, the word says, the Israelites are winning. But when he drops his arms, the Amalekites start to overcome them. If God has given the Amalekites into their hands, why this back and forth based on whether or not his arms are raised? What's the Lord trying to tell us in that? Good question. Inquiring minds want to know. <laughs> Sometimes when we are in the heat of battle, we begin to think, that the victory hinges on us. The ones fighting think that victory depends on their valor and their skills on the battlefield. And the one leading thinks that the victory hinges on their planning and their strategy. But God wants us to know that in reality it is both. East Preston United Baptist Church wins the battle when the leader and the warriors are both engaged in the battle. You may think your effort and energy is what wins the day. I'm out here doing all the work. She's sitting up in her office. But the leader is not just a figurehead. The leader is working too. The leader is holding you up. God shows Moses and God shows the people that teamwork really does make the dream work. It takes pastor and people together to win the day. This battle is going on for hours. It says until sunset and Moses gets tired. Not surprising. The fittest among us would struggle with holding up our arms for five minutes, much less until sunset, from sunup to sunset. Moses gets tired. And a couple of the brothers <laughs> had accompanied Moses up to the hillside, and they see that he is tired. So the word says they get a big boulder for him to sit on. Okay, that addresses one part of the problem. Instead of him standing, now he can sit, but his arms are still tired. So Aaron and her flank him, one on each side, and they hold his arms up. And in this way, they win the battle. Aaron and her held Moses' arms up because they recognized Moses' humanity. They saw the need and assisted as best they could. Yes, he was God's man. He was God's leader for the time, but he was just a human being. They saw his humanity and the fact that he was weary, and they came alongside and they held his arms up. They did not wait to be asked for help. Come on, somebody. They saw what was going on. Mm, when his arms are up, we're winning. When his arms are down, we're losing. Oh, he's holding that staff. Can you imagine holding a staff for... 8, 10, 12 hours? He's holding that staff. He's getting tired. His arms are falling. He never said, help a brother out. They saw it because they were paying attention. They got the rock for him to sit on. Again, not asked, just discerning the need. The rock wasn't enough. So they went further because it was not about them as individuals. It was about the advancement of the people. It was about the victory for the entire people. It was not a glory grab for them. It was about glory for God. Aaron and her anticipated the need and they met the need. But catch this, church. They could not have done any of that 
if they had not been with Moses. They couldn't help him. If he had gone up to the hillside alone, there would have been no one there to help him. But they were with him. And so they could meet the need. If you are not in the room, if you are not at the pastor's side, you cannot see to anticipate any need she may have. Being present is the first thing you must do. You must be with Reverend Andrea. You must be with her in service. You must be with her in the meeting. You must be with her in prayer. You must be with her in Bible study. You have to be there with her to be there for her. To win the battle. It takes you to be together working toward the same aim. Not for individual glory or recognition, but for the team, for the Lord, for the kingdom. Amen. Notice that Moses went up to the top of the hill overlooking the battle. He had a different perspective than the people on the ground. He could see the whole picture, the big picture from where he stood. And sometimes, church, it may not look like it to you, but the pastor is orchestrating and coordinating and delegating based on the big picture. As you work together to achieve the vision for this house, consider that the pastor has probably, I don't know how many people are at East Preston UBC, but I'm just going to say 200 at least. <laughs> the pastor has 200 of you to try to please. <laughs> 200 of you to try to serve. 200 of you to try to meet the needs. And in case you don't understand it or realize it, one person cannot make 200 people happy all the time. Can't do it. And in case you forget, the one that she has to please is not you. <laughs> it's not you. It's not her children. It's not her grandchildren. It's not even Brother Eugene. Sorry about that, bro. <laughs> the one she has to aim to please all the time is the Lord God. The Lord God who created her with a plan in mind. The Lord God who redeemed her and saved her from the pit for this time. The Lord God who set her feet on a path of righteousness and service. The Lord God who called her to preach the good news of the salvation through Jesus Christ our Lord. That is the one that she must please 24-7 because that is the one she's going to answer to when she gets on the other side. And sometimes he don't even wait till we get on the other side. He calls us into account on this side and says, Rhonda, what are you doing? Andrea, what are you doing? These are my people. He is the one that she has to please. And sometimes that spills over onto you. <laughs> Trust the process and be there in support of your pastor. Because when you trust your pastor, you are affirming your trust in God. 
If you say that you love the Lord and you trust the Lord and you believe the Lord and the good steps or the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, if God brought you this person to lead you in your house, then you must get behind that person and assist that person. You have to pray for that person. You can't be at odds with that person and say that you are believing the Lord. If you don't believe, this might sound a little rough, but if you don't believe that God sent her, that God sent her to you, then it may be time for you to go find a shepherd to whom you can respond. I'm just saying. People who love God understand the importance of the church. People who love God understand that unity must be in the house. People who love God understand about being respectful and showing the love that Jesus Christ taught us. And when you love the Lord and you respect and care about his church, it's his church then wouldn't you rather remove yourself than make the church a mess? I mean, it only makes sense to me. Somebody spoke. Somebody heard. Somebody called. And somebody voted. And we believe that it was under the unction of the Holy Spirit. So if this is the one that God has sent to the house, you have a choice. To get with the program or go find a different program. You can't tear up God's house and say you love the Lord. I'm just telling you. I'm going to tell y'all something. When I was called and asked to, to bring a message today, I said yes without hesitation because this is my sister. But when I said yes, I didn't even get to and from my errand. When I was called, I said, oh, I'm on my way out of the house. I'm running on an errand, but yes. And then you can send me the details when I get back home. We'll exchange email, blah, 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 with the person that I was talking to. And I didn't even get back in my house before God said, this is what you need to tell the people. So don't be mad at me. Because I listened. And after, doctor, almost, I guess it's close to 30 years, maybe, well, how many years? 20, 28 years that I've been in ministry that I know the challenges. I know the challenges. And maybe that's why God said, this is a message for you to deliver. But I'm just trying to be obedient. And you need to hear. Because we sometimes do not take seriously what we are doing in the church. And you can't stay in the church and tear up the church and mess with somebody's ministry and think that that's okay with God. It's not okay. We need to be serious about this. And it is not an offense to any pastor for you to come and say, do it the right way, for you to come and say, I'm going to leave in peace because I don't think this is the place for me at this time. That's all. We're adults. We're spiritually mature people. We might want to talk about it and say, well, what is it that I can do? Because, you know, that's the nature of pastors. 
But sometimes it's, you know, Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. And sometimes you ain't my sheep. That's all it is to it. Right, Reverend Jesse? Sometimes that's not your sheep. I ain't mad at you. I want you to go find a house where you will be fed and get a good word and feel like that's a pastor that you can get behind. (laughs) Nothing wrong with that. It's a big kingdom. So I just need to let you know that. That's your option. Don't stay in the church and tear up the church because you're going to pay a price for that. And nobody wants to see that. So, oh, let me get back to, as Reverend Leonard Anderson would say, let me get back on my page. (laughs) Reverend Andrea is the one who's on assignment. And the only one who ends the assignment is the one who made the assignment. So she ain't going nowhere till the Lord says so. I just tell you that. And your house right now is undergoing a lot of change. Everybody needs to be on board. It's growing time. It's growing pains. It's, you know, it's hard. And it's a burden for a pastor. And so everybody needs to be on board. Every soldier is needed in the battle. Reverend Andrea, it's been a year this year. I don't know if it spilled over from last year, but it's been a time. Well, this whole year of your pastorate has been a time filled with challenges of not only settling into the ministry work in this community, but all of the problems with your building on top of everything else. And that should rally people together to address the problem so that you can get on with the real work at hand. See, all of that other stuff is just distractions. It's distractions to keep you away from the real work of winning souls for Christ Jesus. That's the real work. It's not supposed to be about flooded flooded basements. It's supposed to be about feeding people and clothing people and declaring the good news to people. And so all of these things are keeping you away from the real work unless you can work around them. So she has to plan. She has to strategize. She has to say, this is the way we're going to do what we're called to do while this other stuff is happening. She's the one who has to orchestrate that. And if you are with her, then you can be there to see and understand this is the way that I can help in what she's trying to do. Because it's not for her. It's not for her glory. She's here to serve you to the glory of God. And so we all need to be engaged in making it happen. There are some souls that need to be saved. There's a God to glorify, and ain't nobody got time for a whole bunch of foolishness when they have work to do. God wants you to flourish. And interesting, I, was, I had this word, and, and I got a devotion one day because I get these daily devotionals, and it had this little blurb in it about flourishing um, by Dallas Willard. And Willard says, quote, Flourishing is also essentially a matter of the character of the people involved. The character of people in a population is hugely determinative of precisely how well off they are and therefore whether or not their society flourishes, end quote. Change the word society in that to local church and hear this truth, that the character of people in your local church is hugely determinative of precisely how well off you are and therefore whether or not your church flourishes. The character of people. God has the best plan for you. But if you are steadily resisting the leading of God's Holy Spirit, little progress can be made. Sometimes God will make an end run around you and you'll get left behind. 
But most of the time, you start stifling the work that needs to happen because you keep being a cog in a wheel. Do you want to be responsible for that when we stand before the Lord? I remember you had a discussion with somebody once. Do you want to be the reason Reverend Britton's ministry fails? Nobody wants to be responsible for that when they have to stand before Jesus. The potential is in the house. All the ingredients to bake this cake are present in the body at East Preston. God has placed one among you to lead you and work with you to be all you can be. But what kind of character do you have? What kind of character are you? Do you want to squabble and tear down because you want your way? Or do you want to build the house with positive words and actions, with a spirit of cooperation and unity? What kind of character are you? God has a plan for this church family, but it takes you to be open and submitted to God's Holy Spirit. The negative stuff, the defiance, the, the backbiting, the half-truths, the stubbornness, the disrespect. Lord, have mercy, the disrespect. That all needs to stop. The Lord will not bless that mess. So if you fall into that category of people, if that's your character, I hope you have heard and received what I've said. But there are those in your house, Pastor, praise be to God, who have been encouraging and faithful and helpful. And I say to those folks, don't stop now. Don't stop showing up. <clears throat> To support your pastor when she goes to other places to preach. She loved to brag on y'all. I'm going to brag today. Where are, the new, where are the New Horizons folks? Woo! There you are. Amen. New Horizons is in the house. Ha ha! <laughs> That's right. Who said that? That's right. <laughs> Don't stop showing up when she goes to other places. Let people know you love your pastor and you support your pastor. <laughs> Pastors have no problem asking for help for the church and its programming. We can, help, we can, we can raise an offering all day long. But we never want to feel like we are imposing on people when it comes to our own personal needs. So if we personally need something, I'm not talking about money, anything, we may not ask. Don't stop anticipating her needs and extending a helping hand. Sometimes it's just carrying a bag in on Sunday morning. Please don't wait to be asked. If you are among those who have been laboring in prayer for your pastor, don't stop now. If you are one of those holding up her arms when she grows weary, don't stop now. If you are one of those whispering, encouraging words into her ear, don't stop now. If you are one who has been interceding with God in fervent prayer, prayers for protection, prayers for strength, prayers for good health, prayers for a healthy marriage, prayers for greater wisdom, prayers for greater capacity, prayers for sustenance, prayers for provision, prayers for peace. If you're one of those who've been praying for your pastor, keep praying. Don't stop now. Thank you. I have one open down there. If you are one who has extended grace, opening your heart and home, perhaps. I've been, I've been in my church for 17 years and some homes I've never been in. But if you have perhaps opened up your home, but at least opened up your heart, don't stop now. If you are one who has shown your pastor love as God commands us to love, don't stop now. I know there are some who just refuse to get with the program. That's going to be in every church, but God will take care of that. We just keep praying for them. 
There's still some heart work that needs to happen in those cases, but God can change a heart. Praise be to God. All in God's good time. But for those being obedient to the spirit and receiving and supporting the set angel of the house, for those who have yielded themselves over to God and God's sovereignty to choose and use this woman of God that the Lord has chosen to lead you at East Preston, don't stop now. Pastor Andrea, I know the challenge, but keep doing what you do. Keep being who you are. Keep leading how you lead. Keep teaching how you teach. Don't you stop now. The word of God says, do not weary in well-doing, for in due time we will reap the harvest if we faint not. God has more in store for his people. God has a plan to prosper you and not harm you. God has a good end ordained for you. God has plenty good work for you to do. Not for your glory, but to the glory of God and to the increase of the kingdom. Church, your pastor is giving it all she's got. I heard a couple of people say today how hard she works. She's giving it all she's got with the help of the one who gave her to you. Don't give up now. I know it's been a trying time. I know how you feel being out of your building. We were out of our building for four and a half years. But God never failed us. The Lord is faithful. And so I want to encourage you today if she's given it all she's got, give it all you have. Don't give up. Embrace the vision. She's standing up. She's looking out. She's seeing what needs to be done. And she's coordinating. And she's delegating. And she's holding you up in prayer. And she's looking to the Lord with the staff that God has given to her in her hand endowed with the power of God because he doesn't call us to shepherd and leave us God is with her and so you need to listen and embrace the vision don't give in to negativity don't give the enemy a foothold in your heart don't let ego and pride and your desire to be large and in charge get in the way of what God is trying to do in East Preston this is about the kingdom. It is not about you, boo. It's not. We love you, but it's not about you. Don't let misled and misinformed people lead you astray when you know the truth of God word that says that you are to honor the one who labors in the word in your house. It says such a one is worthy of double honor. Stay in your pastor's corner as she fixes her eyes on Jesus. Keep on believing, keep on following, keep on loving. Victory is at hand. Help her hold her hands up when she grows weary. Whatever you do, don't stop now. Amen. Amen, amen, amen.
Don't be afraid to stand and sing with us if you can. You know. I know I feel an anointing in this place today. And I know I'm not the only one. I want to thank you for your word this afternoon. I want to thank you for your word this afternoon. You bless my heart. Thank you. Who can stand against the Lord? No one can, and no one will. Who will stand against the King? No one can, and no one will. Oh. Victory belongs to him. Oh, 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 victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to him. Say, who can stand it? No one. Oh, 
church that I was built on. Thank you that victory belongs to you. God, I thank you even right now that you are placing Aaron in hers. Peace both now and 